Hello YouTubers. So I've been busy working on the bike again over the weekend. So what I've done, I've fitted the number plate mount. That's the number plate mount on the bike now as you can see. Obviously I've covered the number plate, the number plate is under there. Uh, but I've covered it with a piece of that leather. Um, because I don't want any of you to clone my bike. I'm not saying you would, I'm just saying, you know, you can't be too careful because you don't know who's on the internet. So, covered over my number plate, the number plate is on there. Um, also fitted the rear light, that's the rear light there. Unfortunately, it's a little bit too wide to go on the, the mounting for the original rear light on here. So I had to make a little, cut out a little bit of aluminium, drill it and fit it like that. So that doesn't look so good because it's slightly off to one side compared to the number plate which looks a bit stupid but to be honest I'm just trying to get it through the MOT once it's through the MOT then I'll work something a bit better out so the the mounting the number plate hanger this plastic bit which again I got second hand off eBay for not very much tenor or something I think um, this is mounted with a piece of aluminium which is there, which I cut and sh shaped and cut and drilled and everything myself. You can't really see very well, but it's got like three bolts. There's one over on the right, one on the left, and one kind of in the middle at the top. So that bolts the plastic, that bolts onto the plastic. And then um, the aluminium is kind of like bent into an L shape, and it's bolted onto the bottom of the same bolts that hold these brackets on for the seat units. So you've got the brackets there, these brackets that I made last weekend to hold the seat unit on. And they've got bolts going through this bit of the subframe, which maybe doesn't show too well in the, in the video, but there's like a cross member there on the seat unit. So that's holding these two bits, these two brackets. Then the other brackets bolted onto the bottom of those bolts with nuts, if you know what I mean. So that's basically how the the uh, rear number plate is attached and then what I've done is I've put some uh, cable ties through these holes here on the back end of the number plate mount and just cable tied them into the subframe just to make it a bit more stable just so that it doesn't kind of you know flap about too much in the wind and it seems to be reasonably secure I mean I'd say obviously it's plastic so it's got a bit of flex in there anyway you know it's about as secure, I would say, as um, as a normal kind of number plate mounting on the back of a bike, you know. So, kind of, I'm happy enough with that. So that's my number plate mounting, my number plate, and my rear light on. I still to do the rear indicators. The rear indicators are still basically just hanging on the end of the wires. Um, so I need to do a couple of little wee brackets just on the side here sort of in the side and just mount them to the sides of the the rear light something like that so um, still to do that maybe hopefully get that done tomorrow so that was yesterday's job that was I did that Friday evening after I finished work yesterday um, and then today I've been working on the cooling system I basically had to redo the cooling system because it was leaking um, it was leaking from the water joint which you can't really see because it's kind of up in there somewhere but basically when I put the antifreeze in last weekend it just kind of trickled down at the bottom so I went and got an o-ring from Honda and I took stripped out the whole cooling system this morning after I got back from town and um, took the radiator off took all the hoses off took the water joint off, put, cleaned it all up, put the o-ring in, put the water joint back on, put all the hoses back and put the radiator back. Now the other thing that I've done, um, let's take that off just for now, there's a slight leak from that plug, I think it stopped leaking now, I think it's just because it was fresh antifreeze, but anyway, um, yeah so there was a slight problem with the radiator and that's that it was too close to the, the, the front tyre and there was a danger that 
if I hit a big bump, like a pothole or something, the front tire would actually hit the bottom of the radiator. I didn't really want that to happen, so what I've done is I've re-angled the radiator. I've actually, it's again, it's difficult to see this in the video, but before the radiator was kind of angled straight up and down, like perfectly vertical, and now it's like tilted in a bit more at the bottom. I've pulled it back closer. To do that, I also had to move the fan. Um, again, I don't think this shows too well in the video, but the fan is now up at the top of the radiator. Before it was down at the bottom, and the problem with that is the fan itself is like about, I don't know, an inch and a half, two inches thick, okay? There's like a, a black plastic frame around the fan. Um, and so if that's mounted at the bottom of the radiator, that holds the bottom of the radiator out away from the exhaust, okay? So what I've done is I've moved up to the top of the radiator, and that's enabled me to bring the radiator right back close to the exhaust. There's now not a lot of gap between the exhaust and the radiator. It's maybe like half an inch or an inch compared to about two or three inches before, so that's brought the radiator back a lot closer into the bike, which I think it actually kind of looks better. And um, it means that the front wheel will definitely clear it, even if I was to hit a bump really hard and use the full travel, whatever it is, like four inches or something of fork travel, I don't think that rear wheel, uh, that front wheel, sorry, front tire, would actually hit the bottom of the radiator. There's enough clearance there that it wouldn't make contact with it. So that's that. Now what I've done is, to enable me to bring the radiator back, I've actually managed to get hold of some special flexible hoses, and these hoses are way better than the hoses that I've fitted before. See, the hoses that I fitted before were just like standard hose, and I had to put stainless steel corner joints in. Well, then I found this stuff, which is flexible, special kind of flexible hosing that you can kind of make into all sorts of S bends and all sorts. And it doesn't matter how tight you bend it, it doesn't kink because it has like a coiled kind of wire in it. I think it's called, it's got an acronym, it's like. Um, uh, EPDM or something like that, or EDPM or something like that, I can't remember. I'll tell you what I'll do, if I can find it again on eBay, I'll put a link to it in the description of the video. So if anyone needs any, for any project, um, you should be able to find it. I would thoroughly recommend this stuff. If, you, if you're trying to do hoses anywhere that you're trying to put a curve into the hose, definitely get that stuff not the standard hosing because basically like I say you can you can kink it you can put it in as much of a curve as you want and it won't kink which is not the case with normal radiator hosing normal radiator hosing you can bend it a little tiny bit but if you bend it too much it just flattens straight out like a garden hose so I've done the same thing on the other side um, this hose here See that's the that's the other radiator hose and I managed to take it right. This shows you how how bendy this stuff is, right? Because look it's coming off the thermostat, it goes out and it goes all the way around and then forward to the front and onto the radiator. It manages to do that entire curve and there's absolutely no kink in it, whatever. The only slight problem is it does stick out a little bit. I think what I'm gonna do is at some point I'll um figure out a way of cable, cable tying it in a bit closer to the engine just to tidy it up a bit um, so that's the cooling system now done so I've, I've filled the cooling system with uh, antifreeze and touch wood I don't think it's leaking there's a wee tiny drop coming from this um, radiator plug at the back here and I, I've tightened it up a bit and I think it seems to be okay now Uh, there's a wee tiny bit of antifreeze there. It's, it's leaking, but it's leaking very slowly. And the thing with new antifreeze is it tends to kind of, it tends to leak out anywhere that it can get out anyway. So I don't know. I'll probably just need to tighten that up a bit more. That's basically the cooling system done anyway. So then what I did was uh, I started on the fuel system. So what we've got here is the fuel pump. 
I've attached that with the original bracket. I don't have the proper rubber thing, so I've just used a meaty kind of cable ties to basically hold the pump into the original bracket. The bracket's kind of a C shape, so it kind of holds the holds the pump quite well. That's not going anywhere, although it's only held with a big cable tie. It's not, you know, it's rock solid. There's no give in it really, well, next to nothing. Um, cable ties the sorry, the pumps wired into the loom. It's got the drain hose, it's got like a, I think it's like an air bleed off hose which goes down the side of the bike and I tuck that down in front of the uh, front of the sprocket so that it can, uh, you know, any kind of air in the fuel can just escape that way. I think that's the idea of that. So what I've done is the pump, I've got, it's got like an in an in hose and an out hose okay this has been a bit tricky to figure all this out I've had to kind of look at diagrams on the internet and read my Haynes manual figure it all out so, um, so basically this is 10 mil hose so that's going to need to attach, attach to the bottom of my tank okay so that's the, that's the in hose that comes from the tank that goes into the pump and then the pump pumps the fuel out the out hose, which is this one, and through the filter, and from the filter it goes into another hose, and then it goes into this T piece, and from there it goes into these two hoses, which go into the float bowls in the bottom of the carburetor. So that's basically how the carburetor is fueled. Um, that's pretty much how the fuel system works. There's not really too much to it. Petrol comes from the tank, goes into the fuel pump. Fuel pump pumps it through the filter and into the carburetors. And then obviously the carburetors do their thing and you know atomize the fuel for the engine kind of thing. Um, so there's just a couple of there's just a couple of kind of complications. There's this hose here which is um, the air bleed off hose that I think takes like air bubbles and stuff out of the fuel in the carburetors and feeds it back to the top of the tank so I need to figure out how to attach that to the tank because the the air bleed on the CBR929 tank seems to be a different kind of bore this is like a internal diameter of that it's about 10 mil on the 929 it's a kind of different it's kind of smaller than that um, which is probably something to do with the fact that this 929 is fuel injection, whereas this this is carburetors. The other problem is is that because the CBR 929 is fuel injection, um, it uses banjo unions rather than jubilee clips. See on carbureted models, you can just use jubilee clips or whatever kind of um, clamps to just clamp the hoses onto these fittings. But on the fuel injected ones. Use banjo fittings rather than jubilee fittings. So I've ordered a banjo, a banjo union. So what I'll do is I'll just put the banjo union into the end of there, and then bolt it to the bottom of the CBR99 tank. Um, I think I showed you in a previous video that I stripped the um, fuel pump and fuel filter out of the uh, the bottom of the. CBR 929 tank bottom. I'm not explaining that very well. It's kind of difficult to explain. Hang on a second. Yeah, so that's the tank bottom. I'm having to get a new one of these seals as well because I've spoken to the Honda dealer earlier on today and they said anytime you replace it you need a new rubber seal. So I'm getting a new rubber seal to go on there. So that'll seal that bolts onto the bottom of the tank. I'll probably maybe cut this bit off just to get it out of the way. Um, then the banjo bolt goes in there. The banjo bolt's not not in there at the moment. One sec. Let's go. Right, so that's the banjo bolt. You can see it's basically um, banjo fuel pipe union. It's an Allen bolt. Just bolts into the bottom of this tank bottom here. I can't get in just now while I'm holding the camera, but normally how it works is that the pump is in the inside of here in the fuel injected models and it pumps the fuel out 
of the banjo fitting under pressure. That's why it's a banjo fitting, not a jubilee fitting, because a jubilee fitting, for obvious reasons, is not suitable for fuel which is under pressure, or any fuel fluid which is under a great pressure, which in a fuel injection system it would be. Um, but it doesn't really matter. All I'll do is get a banjo fitting. I've ordered one off eBay for a fiver. Fit that in there, just push it into the end of the hose, and there you go, job done. And then this one here, I'm not sure what this is for, to be honest. It just kind of goes into the underneath of there. So, uh, probably what I'll do is I'll just cut that off and weld it up or something. So, that's kind of the fuel system. So, I'm kind of halfway there with the fuel system, um, hoping to have that completed sometime through this week. Um, so, tomorrow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install the battery box and the tank mount um, and I'm also going to do the rear brake so what I'll do is I'll be uploading a video at some point tomorrow or possibly later on today um, to do with the battery box and the, the rear brake and that um, so that's pretty much it for the moment but um, thanks for watching and check back tomorrow because there probably will be more going on at some point thanks very much by then